Dr. Demers mentioned a lot of people in the room of portraits. Who interest you the most and why? For instance, uh, Jacob Rustin Harnberg, he was the first president of uh, Queens College, but his significance goes beyond that is that he was actually one of the founders of Queens College. He signed the original charter um, and he was involved uh, from early on in terms of establishing uh, kind of independence for the uh, Dutch church in the colonies uh, against the classes of Amsterdam. Now, among all these men and Dr. Demers, we still don't know too much about Professor McCormick. Can you give us some background on him? Well, Richard T. McCormick, uh, I'm not sure, I'm sure many people will know this, that uh, he is the father of the current president, Richard L. McCormick. Um, Professor McCormick uh, is a graduate of Rutgers, class of 1938, uh, and, uh, he, and spent most of his life outside of going to the University of Pennsylvania, spent most of his uh, life here at Rutgers uh, University. Uh, became a professor of history, he's, uh, he's a well-known American historian, uh, wrote uh, significant works, uh, books on um, the early, uh, early national period in American history. But he's also concerned about our lack of knowledge of New Jersey history. And he became a real strong proponent of, of trying to educate people in the, in the history of this state. All right, well, in this next part, these two distinguishable men explore what is now called Voorhees Mall. <laughs> I've often admired this statue. I've wondered why it's here on the Rutgers campus. Uh, this is William the Silent, the Prince of Orange, the hero of the Netherlands, the founder of the United States of the Netherlands, the Dutch Republic. The people of the Netherlands were devoted to learning and religion. And they had their early distinguished universities. So the ministers and laymen of the Dutch Reformed Church in this country wanted to found a college, a university. People of the Netherlands erected a statue to William the Silent in The Hague. Years later, the Holland Society of New York had a reproduction, exact reproduction of that statue made in Holland and presented it to Rutgers College because so very appropriate that it should be on the campus of the old Dutch founded college and also due to the special interest of the chairman of the committee of the Holland Society of New York, Mr. Tunis G. Bergen, a graduate of Rutgers. This bleaker place is very attractive, Dr. Demarest. How did the college happen to acquire it? Why the Nelson family owned all this property for years, and Mr. Nelson, of nearly a century ago, established this ridge of land across the block, planting the two middle rows of trees. In 1906, James Nelson of that time gave all this land of this block to the college, now Rutgers University, in 1906, at the time of my inauguration, as president. Well, that was a very fine gift, Dr. Demarest, but how did uh, this place get its name? It got the name Bleecker Place from the Bleecker family of Albany, New York. Mr. Nelson, Sr. married into that family. As I was saying, the beauty of this boulevard was much increased after 1906, especially by the planting of the two outer rows of trees. And then as the years went on, there was still added duty through details of improvement, such as the present sidewalk on either side of the boulevard. Who was William the Silent? 
William the Silent was a national hero of the Netherlands and uh, led the Netherlands in victory over Spain in the mid-16th century. Uh, he was became a hero. He was the Count of Nassau, the Prince of Orange, uh, very famous, and he represents uh, a significant part of uh, you know, the history of the Netherlands. Now, throughout the portion at Voorhees Mall, they kept referring to it as Bleecker Place, but we know it's not called that anymore. When did it change to Voorhees Mall? Bleecker Place is actually, with, when I understand, it was the name of the roads that came through, and actually, traffic uh, cars actually traveled these roads here. And you see where the sidewalks were, there's no traffic now. It was known as Nelson, Nelson Campus because the Nelson family owned the property and then, uh, and then gave it to or sold it to Rutgers. Uh, but it was for the longest time, it was known as uh, Nelson Campus until 1974 uh, when it became Vorey's, Vorey's Mall. All right, well, here is the final part of Demarest Reminds Us. Young men of Rutgers, you have entered into a great tradition tradition of a college founded in colonial times by men of faith and devotion and dedicated to learning, patriotism, and religion. Through the years, men of like faith and devotion have builded Queen's College to Rutgers College and Rutgers University. From the portraits on the walls around you, they look down upon you. Presidents, trustees, professors, graduates, great teachers, men of distinction in law and medicine and divinity and common affairs. They challenge you. They charge you to be true to the trust that they have passed on to you, that by your scholarship, character, and life service, you sustain the prestige and honor of your university, that you prove yourselves worthy sons of your illustrious alma mater. The thanks of the old man's hand, my foot, where no God is ever more to stand. For as he has stood since the time of the flood, on the thanks of the old man's hand. That was certainly an interesting look into the past of Rutgers. Do you have anything else to add, Mr. Fruciano? Well, I'm just uh, glad that the Rutgers community had an opportunity to uh, view this film, which is a, a classic uh, in terms of uh, our historical film collections. Uh, and I um, hope that people have learned something uh, from this film and our commentary here. And I hope people will realize that in a few years we'll be celebrating our 250th anniversary so that everyone becomes interested in Rutgers history. Well, I've certainly learned something, and thank you for giving us insight into this remarkable film. And thank you, Rutgers, for joining us for another episode of Rutgers Retrospective.